Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this we're going to the Com video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with CES 2019 and AMD, as the company have released a press statement detailing some of the things that we will be expecting from the company come January at Las Vegas. Now, uh, we'll start things out with a couple of key interesting points from their statement. In 2019, AMD will catapult computing, gaming, and visualization technologies forward in the world's first 7nm high-performance CPUs and GPUs, providing the power required to reach technology's next horizon. During her CES keynote, Dr. Lisa Su and guests will provide a view into the diverse applications for new computing technologies, ranging from solving some of the world's toughest challenges to the future of gaming, entertainment, virtual reality, with the potential to redefine modern life. There was a quote also attached to this from Gary Shapiro, President and CEO, CTA. AMD is transforming the future of computing in our ever-expanding digital world and revolutionizing the 35 billion uh, US dollar gaming industry. We look forward to Dr. Lisa Su's keynote as she paints a picture of the next generation of computing that will help redefine the future of gaming and virtual entertainment. End quote. Without question, because of the fact that they're mentioning 7nm CPUs, we can almost certainly expect to see some variant of Zen 2. We've discussed Zen 2 a lot recently on the channel, so I don't want to go over old ground, so I'll put in a couple of links in the video description. But not too long, didn't read. It's, of course, 7nm. There are early engineering samples, which are running at 4.5 gigahertz. IPC is around 20% improvement from the original Zen, not Zen Plus. It's about 15% on top of Zen Plus. So that's looking to be very impressive. The reason I say some variant of Zen 2 rather than, let's say, Ryzen 3000 is it's possible we might just get a preview of Epic. It's, it's highly possible that they might just talk about a few, you know, general points of what we're going to see from the architecture, maybe give a preview of what we're going to be seeing from Epic, that type of thing, rather than saying, hey, here's Ryzen 3000, here's what we've got. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw that a month or two later in a different conference, but it's very hard to know for certain. 7nm GPUs, though, almost certainly would mean some variant of Vega and Navi. Now, there are a lot of questions concerning whether we're going to see 7nm Vega for gamers, and a lot of folks have actually been posting this question to me of late and asking, do I think it's going to happen? And I've gone on record and said no in the past, and I'm almost certain it's not going to change anytime soon. There are a lot of reasons behind this. Vega as an architecture is really good for compute oriented tasks, but it was never really nailed 100% for pixel pushing. That's not to say that it's not a good pr a graphics card. Far from it, in certain tasks, it actually does rather well for itself. But I have a feeling AMD are not going to pursue it necessarily for pixel pushing, for gamers. There's a couple of reasons behind this. For one, uh, 7nm Vega supposedly is going to have several changes which will be instrumental to improving the deep learning functionality of the GPU. Also, you need to take into consideration that HPM2 is proving rather expensive, particularly when you add in the Interposer as well. Yes, it is possible AMD could release a version of Vega which is not using HPM2, thus cutting out the costs of the HPM2, which is quite expensive, and, of course, the Interposer. However, I'm not 100% convinced on this because it would also mean that they would need to integrate a different memory controller, and I don't necessarily know if it would be worth it. The main reason I am against this idea as a practice is because Navi. Uh, we don't have a firm release date for Navi, but there's a good chance it's not going to be like the tail end of next year, at least in my opinion. It's probably going to be a little before that. And so from what the leaks are of Navi, and if you believe those, that if they turn out accurate, and if AMD don't change their roadmaps, Navi supposedly is going to be a little bit faster than Vega. We can also make the assumption it's going to be faster than Vega 7nm. Therefore, if, let's say for sake of argument, AMD were to release over the next three months a variant of Vega for gamers, and then six months later release Navi, it just doesn't really make much sense to me. So even if we saw Navi for gamers release in, let's say, February, six months later Navi's released, it would upset too many people, and I don't necessarily know if that's the kind of direction AMD would want to go. Of course, all of this is speculation because, well, roadmaps change all the time. 
I do, however, have more faith in a Polaris-based refresh in the short term. What that looks like in terms of performance, I mean, let's say they go with 12 and M, theoretically 10% uh, increase in clock speeds, that does make some level of sense. Also, the slides AMD have released tell us that we're looking at around a 35% increase in performance from Vega 64 or the previous, the 14NM Vegas to the Vega 7NM. I know it's possible that these are conservative figures. So in reality, by the time they've got final clock speeds down and maybe made some other architectural changes, these figures could be higher, perhaps 40%, 50%, 60%, who really knows? But it's also difficult to know whether this is pixel pushing power an overall performance of the GPU, which would also include machine learning as well, or something different, no one really knows for certain. So in my opinion, at least for now, we're not going to be seeing 7NM for gamers. That's going to be reserved for uh, Vega, and then later on, Navi will come to 7NM. That's how I personally think the mode map's going to happen, but we don't really know for certain. Now let's move over to Windows updates. Yes, I know that's a bit of a strange topic, but DXR has actually finally seen the light of day thanks to the October update for Windows 10. DXR, for those unfamiliar, is the API from Microsoft that's, I guess, the brother of DirectX, you could call it, that is responsible for ray tracing. As we all know, Turing's out there currently, and uh, NVIDIA have made a great big deal of the whole ray tracing phenomenon, but they are not operating in isolation here. It's almost certain that AMD's new GPUs, whether that's going to be Navi or a future GPU like Arcturus, is going to also support ray tracing. Now, this is actually very interesting from not only the point of view of NVIDIA, but also AMD and Intel. So DirectML or Direct Machine Learning is an API which is going to be very much like DirectX. It's a low level API, but allows developers to use things such as ray tracing and super sampling with machine learning. So once again, we have inference here. There's actually a white paper that Microsoft released. I'll try to remember to link it in the video description, but there's a couple of slides on screen anyway. And you could see that yes, the GPUs supported here are not just NVIDIA's GPUs, they are also AMD's as well, going way back to the early days of GCN, like the Radeon 7000 series, and also various uh, Intel-based GPUs as well, iGPUs. Now, the reason that's rather exciting is because it does tell us that AMD and Intel are going to be supporting this aggressively. Of course, there are the questions of performance. We know that uh, when it comes to NVIDIA, currently turning on ray tracing already hurts performance. Not that there's a whole bunch of benchmarks yet that reviewers can test out, but that's a slightly different topic. But even so, what type of performance impact are we going to be seeing with uh, Direct ML? What type of uh, impact are we going to be seeing when we take into account inference machine learning with ray tracing. It's a really cool topic and honestly I can't wait for more information and to be able to test this stuff out. However, uh, we're not going to see preview builds and the tools start to appear in, uh, to developers until 2019. So that means NVIDIA are going to have at least a leg up in the short term to be able to provide these tools. But once again, it's going to be fascinating to see just how the industry evolves, particularly when you factor in that that could also bring machine learning and ray tracing to consoles like Project Scarlet, which the rumors peg to be released in 2020. So if that's true, in theory at least, the next generation of consoles, which we can presume are going to use some type of AMD GPU, will actually be leveraging machine learning and inference to actually put ray tracing in games and possibly some form of super sampling. But once again, this is just speculation because we don't really know 100% yet. Also, while we're on the subject of GPUs and Intel, we might as well discuss some updates concerning Ice Lake and its iGPU. Too long didn't read, these new GPUs will be able to output via DisplayPort both 5 and 8K, thanks to new compression technologies. We haven't actually seen a major update to uh, Intel's iGPUs for some time. It's actually Generation 9.5, which debuted with Skylake. Everything else has been slight incremental upgrades. But now with Ice Lake, there's going to be something more tangible. The company confirmed at XDC 2018 that their iGPUs will, dis will support DisplayPort 1.4a along with Visa D 
SC, which means display stream compression. 4K will be up to 120 hertz refresh rate. Meanwhile, 8K will be at just 60 hertz. Now, the reason these technologies are so important is because the sheer bandwidth, the sheer amount of data being pushed through the display port without DSC technology is just too great. With compression, just like if you're zipping up a file, you're simply shrinking the amount of data. Now, this information is visually lossless according to the slides, but what it does mean is that we can output at 5K, 120 hertz for next generation of displays. I'm going to take a moment to also thank everyone who's recently subscribed to the channel. It means an awful lot for all the support, as well as the messages. I've been receiving a lot of messages and emails recently, so thanks very much to that. Uh, for those who are new, this is not my typical filming location. I'm actually in the United States right now. I'm usually in the UK, but I'm staying with a friend, kind of touring around Seattle and doing, well, you know, touristy stuff and a few interviews and stuff like that with companies as well. But I'll be back in the UK soon. So with all of that said, hopefully I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.